Thank you. My name is Linda Van Nostrand. I am a resident of Castle Rock, Colorado. I am a fourth generation Coloradoan. My great great grandfather settled in Castle Rock in early 1860s and operated a business of providing cheese and small grocery items to travelers just north of town. Needless to say, I possess a deep love of this place and my roots go deep. At present, the town of Castle Rock posts beautiful pictures of open spaces on its website and can be seen on the electronic billboard at the factory stores. I don't see pictures of malls, housing developments, urban sprawl and on any such advertisements or promotional venues for our community. Castle Rock is known for its beauty. Open space is essential and critical to have in our community. <clears throat> People are drawn to this area for open space and the ability to enjoy nature. Promoting this community through pictures of nature and open space while simultaneously overdeveloping in every patch of bare land is hypocritical and false advertising. Additionally, the building of this mall contradicts Castle Rock Municipal Code. While I am <clears throat> pleading for a delay in the construction of yet another mall, it is ultimately asking for this town council to stop and listen to what the people are saying. We don't want another mall. Leaving the open spaces will perpetuate the uniqueness of this place. Castle Rock is rapidly starting to look like Aurora, Westminster, and Highlands Ranch, which are all communities that resemble one another and are nothing special. This community has the opportunity at this time to do the right thing. What is not known by people making decisions in the interest of progress is the harm that is done when destruction of fragile ecosystems occur. When humans interact with nature, we frequently wind up redecorating it selfishly. Intentionally or not, it is as if humans have a powerful inborn urge to reshape nature, to expand their horizons. It is as if we just cannot help ourselves and little else and, or stop ourselves and little else does, even the blatant results of our trying to dominate, manage, and control our surroundings. We move animals around as if we move furniture, and we, re de we de redecorate landscapes with little concern for maintaining biological integrity. Is there a solution for this situation we have created? Creative, proactive solutions drenched in deep caring, respect, and love for the planet can be developed to deal with the broad range of challenging problems with which we are confronted. Love also is an essential ingredient in the recipe for reconciliation. Its power must not be underestimated as we forge ahead to reconnect with nature. Often we sit around and ponder the crises for which we are responsible as wilderness and wildness slip away right in front of our senses. Primary forests have all but disappeared. Shopping malls and parking lots take precedence over the lives of threatened species as black-tailed prairie dogs whose close-knit families are decimated by bulldozers and by drowning them in their underground homes. It is all too easy to throw up our hands and give up hope. We have truly made some egregious errors, but it is important to remain hopeful if there, are any if there is any possible salvation. If we are ever to reconnect to nature as our ancestors connected during their long evolutionary history. You have 30 seconds left. Indeed, life as we know it is only a blip in time. Even more disturbing than a doomsday view that the world won't even exist in 100 years if we fail to accept our unique responsibilities. Surely we do not want to be remembered as the generation that killed nature. I would miss other animals and environs more, when, more than I would miss a finger or two or an appendage. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Just to let everyone know, this is a town council meeting, and we do expect to maintain decorum during this time. I do understand there's strong feelings out there on both sides, but that's the last time that we're going to allow an outburst. If that does happen again, we will begin escorting individuals out, so just please understand we do need to maintain decorum as we go through this item. Okay? Moving on to the next speaker is Keith Lattimore Walsh. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, my name is Keith Lattimore Walsh. I'm a member of Wildlands Defense. Five years ago, I moved to the town of Castle Rock. I had been planning to move here after years of stopping here on my way back from vacation in Connecticut. What enticed me to move to Castle Rock was the symbiosis between the people and the awesomeness of nature. My reason for choosing the particular place to live that I did was the abundance of wildlife that would be within walking distance. On my daily and sometimes nightly walks, I encountered all that I knew in this area to be. Deer, elk, eagles, hawks, owls, rabbits, beavers, mice, and most importantly, the prairie dogs. I encountered these dogs every day and spent much time watching them to find out who they were, understanding how they live, and entertaining myself with their social skills between one, one another. I spent the better part of five years observing the colonies west of the outlet mall. I learned so much just by observing. Who did the prairie dogs share this area with? Who or what came to this area because of them? I observed gold eagles, bald eagles, prairie hawks, crows, magpies, and owls, small burrowing owls in the air and on the ground. It took me a while to identify the things that I had not seen before, but that is part of the learning. I observed deer, coyotes, and elk all in this area. In fact, there was an elk herd that came up from Plum Creek and walked up the hills on this lot last year. That is something I had not seen in a long time here. As the bridge project known as the North Meadows Extension from I-25 got underway, the biggest thing I noticed was the sound of coyotes had disappeared. That in itself astounded me. Then I heard of the Castle Rock Promenade Project. I was inquisitive to every faction of this project, to no, available, uh, no avail. My questions and concerns went unanswered. No one was willing to hear the voice of reason and despair at the idea of deleting my main attraction for moving here. I sold everything I owned to move here, to this spot because of what it offered not for reasons that I did not know of, the pending destruction of the major portion of a natural part of Castle Rock. All the research I did for my chosen residence was about to be undermined. I made calls to the IREA, to the managers of the intended residence, just to make sure I was making the right decision. And yet, it can disappear with a pen and the constant hunger caused by greed. These animals were my friends. They got to know me. They were curious about me. They learned that I meant no harm to them. After so much thought and sleepless nights, I had to leave my residence. I had chosen to be there for every reason, and, and you are intent on destroying, and as of two weeks ago, I could no longer live there anymore and move to the other side of town. I'm a disabled person. It is hard for me to do this. I feel I've been forced to leave a place I love because of greed. Has anyone asked all the residents of Castle Rock whether this is a good idea? You have 30 seconds left, sir. Does the elimination of nature for the economic reasons do justice for the people of Castle Rock? This promenade will do nothing for me, as thousands of others in Castle Rock will agree. Some near, some far. The nature that is unfortunately was here and good to everyone who has seen it Money cannot replace the joy of nature, and given the chance, nature will take back what belongs to it. I see this mall as a shameful exposition of wealth and nothing more. At your, the very your four minutes are up, sir. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Brenda Beatty. Hello. Thank you for hearing me. <clears throat> My name is Brenda Beatty. I actually am a resident of Douglas County, um, and I live over off of 105 uh, and Wolfensburger. Um, I have a Master's of Science in Biology, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the prairie dogs. The black-tailed prairie dog is a keystone species. I know you've all heard this, but I don't know if you know what it means. This is a very simplistic diagram of 
uh, the food chain and the food web that the prairie dogs belong to. This picture shows just a, a smidgen of the animals that depend on the prairie dog for their very existence. Antelope, snakes, burrowing owls, lark buntings, meadowlark, Swainson's hawk, golden eagle. And then I brought some other pictures to show you. I, I know they're not high quality, but you know they're from a Xerox machine, so just bear with me. The black-footed ferret, who's endangered. Uh, let's see. Jackrabbit. The ferruginous hawk, which is a state candidate species for listing. The, the uh, bald eagle that uh, shifts its diet to prairie dogs during the winter, and when they go back north during the summer, they eat fish. Oh, th this is another ferret, and here's a ferret eating a prairie dog, dragging, dragging it into the burrow. Here's a coyote eating a uh, prairie dog. Here's a coyote and a badger together in a prairie dog town. Here's a badger. Here's an endangered swift fox. Here's an endangered um, um, piping plover. These are state-threatened burrowing owls. This is a um, tiger salamander, and these are prairie dogs. So you may wonder why all these animals are endangered. Let me go back one second and say that there are 180 more animals that have been found in association with prairie dog towns. A lot of these animals become extinct because they are associated with prairie dog towns, and prairie dogs have been reduced by 99% since the 1900s. <clears throat> what I want is, I, I know it's kind of ridiculous at this point in the game to say I don't want a mall, but I don't. But given that we may have a mall, I, I think we need to do a paradigm shift in our, saving, in our thinking. We need to understand that um, the person, let's see, I have a bunch of stuff written down here. Hold on. <laughs> um, I, I would like this project approved with conditions. I would like the conditions to involve moving the prairie dogs in June, not in March when the mothers are underground having babies and they stay underground. So you would just move all of the, the males and leave them, the mothers and their young behind. Is, is that what you would like to do? Do you, do you want to see your um, grandchildren to know the prairie by only photos? All these animals evolved with one another for a reason, God's reason. You have 30 seconds left, ma'am. Okay. Um, I agree that we can work together. I don't agree on credits. I think that um, your person reading the invocation said that we care for all things. And um, your person with the CREP mission said that we maintain community character, and that includes wildlife. Thank you. Great, thank you, Ms. Beatty. Uh, next I have Dan Rifkin. Hello, I'm Daniel Rifkin. I am not a resident of Castle Rock, but like the Prairie Dogs, I'm a native resident of Colorado. I understand that a large Prairie Dog colony will be bulldozed or poisoned to make room for a shopping center in Castle Rock. Regardless of any personal feelings or misconceptions about these animals, it should be recognized that these animals are Colorado native keystone species with close family ties, a complex language, and exhibit sentience. As a keystone species, their elimination means the disappearance of many other species dependent on their burrows or as a food source. It's time for huge multi-million dollar developers like Alberta Development Partners out to make substantial profits to step up and do the right thing here for Colorado's native wildlife and concerned residents. Instead of destroying a huge swath of land and wildlife habitat, make the commitment to find an alternative location for these prairie dogs. This may mean procuring land within the county, 
possibly with the assistance of local partners for this local government to recognize the value of native wildlife and these amazing creatures and ensure that concerned citizens are heard instead of being, I'm sorry, instead of the, the council potentially becoming a complicit entity to the building of a shopping center. I urge you as representatives of Castle Rock to use your influence and leverage to require the developer, Alberta Development Corporation, who has many financial and other resources at its fingertips to be good citizens and find a non-lethal solution to the prairie dog problem. This should include procuring suitable land within the county for relocation, as I mentioned. Is this not within the spirit, if not the letter, of the city's comprehensive master plan, which I've reviewed? Is it our legacy to destroy the last remaining wild places with native wildlife between Denver and Castle Rock for another mega shopping center? Is it only about commercial expansion and financial gain at the destruction of our natural heritage? Will our children be happier knowing we killed the last of the wild for another factory outlet? Peter Cud Cudlip, hope I'm saying his name correctly, from Alberta, says that prairie dogs are not endangered species, which I think devalues the over a thousand prairie dogs who are slated to be killed. It should also be pointed out that they are down to less than 5% of their historic range and that is vanishing quickly. I also dispute the characteristic characterization of Mr. Cudlip as using diligence in his efforts to work with the concerned wildlife group. There has been, as I understand it to date, four acres offered to save some of the existing prairie dogs, which is woefully insufficient. He needs to make an effort to find land which is affordable to his corporation to save these prairie dogs. Tell Alberta Development Partners and Mr. Cudlip, don't just kill wildlife to build another shopping center. Compel Alberta and Mr. Cudlip to find the prairie dogs a new home and make this right. You have 30 seconds left, Mr. Rifkin. I have nothing else to say. I'm disgusted if this development goes ahead without any consideration for the many prairie dogs on this site. And I hope you will be sensitive to the concerns of the many citizens here who wish to see something done which is not going to be in the tradition of what we have done in the past, which is just wipe out the prairie dogs. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, I have Randy Meyer. Good evening, Mayor and Town Council. My name is uh, Randy Meyer. I have lived here my whole life, which is 45 years. I have grown up here. I have gone to school here. I have voted yes on any um, amendments or agendas that have been regarding open space. Um, if I wanted to live in Denver, I would have moved there. I've continued to live here my whole life because of the small town quality that we have. Um, I think we do have a responsibility to protect the wildlife and our quality of life around here, large or small. Nuisance is defined by who. And uh, to seriously look at all impacts that any development has to an area. And we do have that responsibility to keep our small town small and to not transform it to a big city. Sometimes it's not about uh, revenue rich, but quality of life rich. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Deanna Meyer? Hello, I'm Deanna Meyer. I'm with Wildlands Defense. I'm also a longtime, lifetime resident of Douglas County. I was born and raised in Castle Rock, and my family has been here for over 50 years. This town represents a small rural community with unique land formations and open spaces that make it feel like home. My memories are held in all of these natural features and in the wildlife that has persisted here, despite the destruction, since I was a little child. 
In the past two decades, I have watched one development after another move into this area as colony after colony of prairie dogs have been eradicated. And with these, pra with these prairie dogs, the land is stripped of the hundreds of other beings that live here. The eagles, hawks, mountain plover, coyotes, fox, bobcats, reptiles, burrowing owls, black-footed ferrets, and other countless species that depend upon the prairie dogs for their survival. As the land is continually stripped of her features and her wildlife, my memories fall into pieces and get lost underneath all that concrete. I'm not alone in these values. Everyone I know who lives in Douglas County values the open spaces, natural features, and wildlife here, and lists these values as attributes that attracted them to this town. Our own cap comprehensive master plan also acknowledges those values by establishing the guidelines for development through the plan that protect the small town atmosphere, land, land formations, and wildlife. For example, as stated on page 8, 3OS-4.3, quote, preserve land for the benefits of wildlife through the preservations of fragile ecosystems, habitats, and corridors, unquote. All ecosystems are fragile, and taking out a keystone species does not preserve fragile ecosystems, but rather tears apart the ecological web in this biome, destroying the homes of not only the thousands of prairie dogs living here, but also of all the other species dependent upon them. Prairie dogs are dramatically declining throughout this continent, and because of the ranching and overdevelopment of the prairies, their populations are now down to 1% of their historic numbers. Our prairies used to be full with these animals. The largest known prairie dog colony was over 25,000 square miles in size. Our continent had between 1 and 5 billion prairie dogs living on the land, and these animals supported over 200 different species that depended on them for food and shelter. When the prairie dogs are extirpated from these lands, the other species disappear along with them. Prairie dogs are, in no uncertain terms, an endangered species, and every single last remaining colony should be saved. Imagine what the prairies and lands used to look like before our culture dominated the landscape. What happened to the prairie dogs happened to the bison, the great auk, the passenger pigeons, the wolves, the salmon, and the countless other species, species that once filled this landscape. All wildlife is now dwindling, falling to incredibly low numbers and in danger of extinction as we continue on this path hell-bent on destruction of the natural world. 200 species went extinct today. What is our threshold before we're willing to act in defense of life? Our county's own prairie dog conservation plan acknowledges that the prairie dog needs protection and land to thrive in our county. I am asking the council mes members to follow the directive in section 17.30.030F of the municipal code stating that, quote, consideration shall be given to wildlife impacts, unquote, before approving the major plan amendment to the applicable PD plan. In addition, I ask that the town facilitates a solution that will get these prairie dogs either moved on the county-owned land intended for prairie dog habitat or require that Alberta Development purchase land within the county to relocate these prairie dogs to. Specifically, I request that you delay construction on the promenade at Castle Rock Project until June so concerned residents and groups can get together the necessary resources to effectively relocate this colony to a safe and viable habitat. When a corporation moves into our county and proposes development left, of 166 man. acres, most of which is the long-established habitat of thousands of prairie dogs, then Alberta, de the Alberta Development, along with the town, have a moral, ethical, and legal obligation to consider the wildlife that has been living here for past decades. I am asking you to stand by the Castle Rock Municipal Code 17.30.030F and give these prairie dogs and all the other lives that depend upon them your consideration by insisting in their safe and effective relocation. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I have Fred Gibson. Thanks for the chance to talk tonight. Uh, my name is Fred Gibson. I'm a resident of uh, Colorado Springs. And I'm a retired lieutenant colonel, and over the course of the 25 years that I wore uniform, I've had a number of opportunities to reflect on the nature of service. And uh, I'd like to have uh, humbly offer this opportunity for you to reflect on the nature of your service and maybe to broaden your notion of what a constituency is. I've lived here uh, for the most part of 45 years uh, after having lived in places like South Philly and the South Bronx. And when I got here, I was thunderstruck by what I saw. Apparently, this was what nature was, and it was pretty cool. Um, 
uh, in the interim, this place has changed, and not necessarily for the better, though. Um, I wonder how many of us question the path that this town has taken. I, again, I'd like to have this be an opportunity for us to reflect on that. There's been a substantial focus in the Promenade Mall discussions on development, with the assumption that development, progress, and growth are goods to be desired, and I'd like to question that assumption. We also assume that development and growth is inevitable, uh, and I'd offer that not only is it not inevitable, it's not sustainable. And a couple of seconds worth of math will uncover the truth in that proposition. Since development is such a tenuous proposition, we should at least be very careful about how it's done. This is precisely what we're asking the council to do. Engage in the due process and due diligence necessary so that we don't do something that can't be undone. I'm here to urge the council to enforce and live up to your municipal code and planning ordinance which protect wildlife and our natural heritage. We're not here trying to stop development. We're asking you to delay the work already begun until you approve a major amendment to the PD plan. We ask you to follow the directive in section 1730030F, consider the wildlife impact seriously, give us a chance to relocate the prairie dog colony and help them survive. We'd also like you to consider your constituents as more than just the people in this room, that it extends to the environment we live in and all the life that's part of it. If there has to be development, it should at least be responsible development. Don't squander the ecosystem that we think that you were stewards of because we can't rebuild it once it's gone. And as a sign of good faith, uh, if I can press my luck this evening, we'd like to ask permission to feed the animals that we understand are starving while everybody is deliberating what to do next. Then when all is said and done, we can thank you for your service. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Gibson, and thank you for your service. Uh, next I have Amber Pate. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. My name is Amber Pate, and I'm a re resident of Douglas County. Castle Rock used to be beautiful. It had a historic small town atmosphere that coexisted with nature. It used to be teeming with wildlife. What has happened to this town? Have you seen it? It is now overrun with houses and commercial buildings as far as the eye can see. I strongly encourage everyone in this room to look at the direction Castle Rock is headed and what the agenda is. For myself and many others, it is turning into something that we lived here to avoid. Have you seen it? Have you seen the amount of animals that have been displaced by never-ending housing projects and now another mall? Have you seen the blatant disregard for nature that has consumed this town? I am here tonight to speak for the animals who cannot speak for themselves who cannot defend themselves against corporate greed and industrialization. I am here to stand up for the largest prairie dog colony on the front range, whom were never can give in consideration in the land development of the nation's largest mall by neither Alberta Development or the town of Castle Rock. How many of us have actually gone out to this site and observed these animals? Have you taken the time to actually stop, listen, and watch? Have you seen these prairie dogs and their families living in their home that they have had for decades? Have you seen it with more than land surveys? Have you seen it with more than your pocketbooks and bottom lines? The short-sighted mindset of these creatures as pests will soon be the demise of their species and, and many others who rely on them. Our short-sighted greed will be ours. Have you seen it? They deserve to exist as you and I do. The animals that depend on them deserve to exist as you and I do. None of this is about being a tree-hugging hippie or an environmentalist. It is about paying attention to the world around us. It is about stepping out of your suburbia neighborhood and stepping away from your office desk. It is about us opening our eyes and truly seeing with our being. Soon everyone is going to need to be an environmentalist. We all share the same environment. All of our actions affect each other. We as humans, we as humans have destroyed 99% of black-tailed prairie dog populations and habitat. Let that sink in, 99%.
The black-footed ferret and burrowing owls are endangered because of us. Industrial casualties of short-sighted greed. Do you remember the vast expanses of prairie dogs in Colorado? Do you see them anymore? No. They have been mowed down by the almighty dollar. When will enough be enough? We do not need more imported knickknacks to be sold here. We do not need destination malls and outdoor rec centers to bring in more tourism and revenue. We, as human beings, need nature. We need animals. We need from which we came. When will this senseless consumerism end? Have you seen it? When will we start seeing with more than our bank accounts and finances? When will we start seeing again with more than our eyes? What will it take for us to realize that our selfish actions affect our children and their children? This cannot be undone. We are asking for the town of Castle Rock and Alberta Development Partners to give us the necessary amount of time to safely relocate all of the prairie dogs, not just some, because it is the right thing to do. It is the least we can do for them. The development can wait. We are drawing a line in the sand with this prairie dog colony tonight, right here and now. Have you seen it? You have 30 seconds left. Now. I'm done. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Claudia Yura. Good evening. My name is Claudia Yura, and I'm a resident of Castle D mm -hmm. Douglas County in Castle Rock. Um, I came to this country from Germany in 76. I lived in Los Angeles for 16 years, and then relocated to this area here, to Boulder actually. And when I uh, rode my bike in Boulder once, I stopped uh, in the middle of town. There was a field with these very strange little creatures that I'd never seen in my life. We don't have any prairies over there, no prairie dogs. And uh, I marveled about their communal living and just was in awe watching them for a long time. And, and um, I thought besides of what obviously they, they are good for in the keystone uh, uh, animal they are, I think uh, we have something to learn for them as well. I saw no fighting while I was watching them. They were very communicative with each other, very alert, looking out for the babies and so on and so forth. And I thought maybe they're here for a reason to teach us something. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, um, what about, you know, I heard about the Preble jumping mouse, and I know that they have, they're endangered species, and uh, why are the, if there's only one or two percent, I've heard that as well, left of the, of the prairie dogs, why are they not an endangered species? Why do they stamp them like, uh, not just a, uh, um, not what you call these, uh, hold on. Um, a rodent, but worse even. There's another word, and I can't think of it right now. Vermin? Yes, vermin. And I think it's as far as I understand. I don't even know what that is. It sounds like worms. But, um, you know, do they... Uh, I know that the farmers and the ranchers and the cowboys, they, they didn't like them because they got in their way for the horses and all that. So they should have a right and a voice. So I think that's why we're all here. Um, so I will, I'm hoping very much that uh, Alberta will do the right, the right uh, uh, decision and, uh, and create a good home for them because uh, what right do we have as a species to simply kill a torturous, in a torturous and inhumane manner animals that are simply in our way? Who gives us the authority to be cruel? When did we learn that it was acceptable to kill others for convenience. At what point is our natural inclination for humanity replaced with callous disregard? Did we learn this in school, from our parents, our churches? Would any of us here take a defenseless animal home and throw rocks on it until it died? I don't think so. Does it somehow make things okay if we have big machines do it? Are we then somehow emotionally divorced from the slaughter? How does it happen that good, peop good kind people who would never want to kill at home transform into something 
who, or someone who does not care? These are questions I wonder about because I believe that people are by nature good and kind. When I look into the eyes of a child, I see purity and love. When did we deviate from that? How do we get back to who we are in truth? You have 30 seconds left, Ms. Nero. These are the questions we need to be asking above and beyond suggested guidelines of Douglas County. It's more than guidelines that are followed or not. It's about our very humanity as a species. If we have lost our humanity, then what do we have left to pass on to our children? What kind of a world can we create for them? And I know my time is up, so I'm going to stop. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, I have um, Christine Merowitz. Thank you for hearing me. My name is Christine Horowitz. I'm a Castle Rock resident and live in Castle Pines, and I choose to live in this beautiful place because of the land and the wildlife that made it so attractive. I'm originally from Germany, and there are no prairie dogs anywhere in Europe. They only live in America, and that is one of the many things that makes part of this landscape so unique. The prairie dog is one of the most important species in the American prairie. Its numbers used to be so great that Lewis and Clark, on their journey up the Missouri River, noted that the animals appeared in infinite numbers. Now, due to the intrusion of man, this wonderful creature's populations have been dramatically reduced. We must save this animal, not only because we are responsible for its demise, but also because Western ecosystems depend on the prairie dog. Conservation of prairie dogs is of great importance to the prairie ecosystem. These animals were largely exterminated by farmers who killed the prairie dogs because they worried their cattle would break legs by stepping in the burrows. In reality, however, there are no documented cases of any cattle ever being injured by a prairie dog, dog burrow. Hunting prairie dogs for sport and for pest control has persisted right up to modern times. If such hunting, ranching, and development continues, the populations will continue to drop very low and horrible consequences will follow for the ecosystem of the short grass prairies. I ask this council to follow the directive in the section of the municipal code that states, consideration shall be given to wildlife impacts before approaching the major plan amendment to the applicable PD plan. Specifically, I ask that the developer and council consider delaying construction on the Promenader Castle Rock project until the option of an environmentally viable translocation of these prairie dogs to another site has been fully explored. I'm not asking for an extensive study, but the relocation of the prairie dogs that have called the area home for centuries. The Castle Rock Municipal Code calls for the protection for natural wildlife. The decision to kill thousands of prairie dogs that have been living there for decades actually goes against Douglas County's own prairie dog management policy, but the plans were allowed to proceed. Protection and management of prairie dogs is vital for many reasons, including the potential movement of more ecotourism people into Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, Montana, and Utah in search of the untamed West, only to find it disappearing on the parking lots, concrete, and super malls. As the Cree prophecy says, when the last tree is cut down, the last fish eaten, and the last stream poisoned, you will realize that you cannot eat money. Please, let's not make this mistake. Thank you for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next, I have Stacy Wagner. My name is Stacy Wagner. I'm a resident of Castle Rock, and like so many other people you've heard from tonight, I too chose to live in Castle Rock because of its natural beauty, its wildlife, the beautiful topography that occurs here. 
I've spoken previously to this council and uh, um, provided comments to the Planning Commission regarding my concerns about this project and the impacts that I feel that it will have on the quality of life of residents of Council Rock, the character of our town, and, and most especially the aesthetic beauty of Council Rock. I just want to add tonight that I support I strongly agree with the comments that you've already heard tonight, and I also simply urge the council to do what is right in regard to the lives of these animals and to work with Alberta to find a solution that is biologically vi viable. With the project of an economic value of 145 to 177 million dollars based on published information, surely the re economic resources can be found to relocate these animals rather than simply bulldozing over them. Thank you very much, and I do appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak, and I hope you will consider very thoughtfully the very intelligent and emotionally emotional comments that you've heard here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wagner. Uh, next, I have Sandy Nervig. My name is Sandy Nervig, and I do not live in Castle Rock. Um, I actually live in Pine, but like Danny, who spoke before, I am a Colorado native, and I do believe that all wildlife in this state belongs to all of us. And um, I guess what I'd like to bring is a little bit different perspective. Uh, I've actually dedicated the last 15 years of my life to relocating prairie dogs and to preserving um, short grass prairie habitat um, in our state and other states. And I actually have been meeting um, with the Prairie Dog Coalition and um, uh, the developer to try and find a solution to relocating these prairie dogs. And so far, we've run into a lot of, no, we can't do that and not much um, we'd be willing to look at anything or compromise. So that's kind of why we're at this point where we've come to you and we think that there can be a very viable solution to um, relocating these prairie dogs. Um, the biggest obstacle obviously is to find land and we've been working on that. The Prairie Dog Coalition has actually been working on that prior to even engaging in talks with the developer. Um, we continue to explore all options uh, and would hope that Alberta Development and possibly the town of Castle Rock and possibly Douglas County could all come up with a solution to move this um, amazing keystone species um, so that we can preserve them as well as the other associated wildlife who um, a lot of them are at risk right now, um, not only in our state, but for being endangered and going extinct in the near future. Um, just because prairie dogs are not listed as a <coughs> endangered species, our black tails are not, um, that doesn't mean they're not endangered. Um, that means that they are not a sexy species who warrant the attention of most people. And I've actually worked with a gentleman, Dr. Khan Slobachikov, who uh, studied prey dog language for over 30 years. And he has actually proven that prairie dogs have the most sophisticated language of any animal studied so far. He concedes that any other, a lot of the other animals, in fact, probably most other animals, might have as sophisticated of languages, including our great apes, dolphins, parrots, other animals that we think to be very intelligent. Um, but he has actually proven this through his scientific research. So I do believe there's a huge value to Colorado residents, to um, ecotourism, to wildlife viewing. Um, I'm actually also a photographer and I get endless 
hours, days, months, years of joy out of watching and photographing these wildlife. So 30 seconds left, man. I would plead with you again um, to, if not, it looks like this development is going to go through. I would, I would ask that, like others have, um, we can delay it, we can find a solution to moving these animals, and we can save our native wildlife. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Ellen Heckner. Hello, Mayor and Council. I'm Ellen Heckner, and I am a resident of Arapahoe County. Um, and I'm here tonight to tell you that... Uh, Ellen, do you want to adjust your the microphone up a little bit? There you right go. Right there? Is that good? Yeah, perfect. Okay. I'm here to say that um, I've lived here since 1962, and what was open is now paved, and it's landscaped to what humans think is pretty, with landscape species that are not native and require tons of water. I'm a horticulturist by trade. I know what I'm speaking about. Um, so the things that prairie dogs need to live are not things that people need. And I really, really would suggest that, like everyone before me, they, uh, they have said that the prairie dogs are valuable. And I certainly agree with that. I did a paper in college on nothing but prairie dogs. Um, what I would say uh, in response to the gentleman that the developer that was up here, the proposed changes to the zoning are only five acres less development. I don't know, that's why I got up and looked at that piece. Um, also, uh, he said, quote, there, are, there is no good relocation site. That's what he said. Also, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers studied the wetlands, which is not a great piece of this property, but at the same time, um, it's vital to the animals that live there because we have so little water naturally in Colorado. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers has a terrible track record. <laughs> Florida is paved, okay? They said it was all good and drained. And look what happens when they are relied on for their expertise. Um, also, there's 13-acre buffer zone. Uh, it's landscaped with non-native species. And um, I just, the prairie dogs, they're not going to, they're not going to deal with this very well. Um, what I would really like to see happen, which is not what everyone else has said, uh, I think Casserot's pr doing pretty good right now. I think there's quite a bit of money um, happening here. Um, what I would like to see, and I know this is against a lot of things, okay, what you would say, what you would uh, believe, my best hope is that the town of Casserot buy this land from the developer and make it a wildlife refuge or put it under the aegis of the Nature Conservancy and the Prairie Dog uh, Coalition, progress should not come before compassion and respect for this ecosystem. Thank you very much for hearing me. Thank you, Ms. Heckner. Uh, next I have Emily. I'm pretty sure it's you. Emily Pakula, Pav. Was that right, Pakula? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. Hi, and thank you for hearing everyone speak tonight. I'm Emily Pakula, and I'm Amanda Strohmeyer, and we're seniors at Castle U High School, and we're firm believers that environmental stability should be the primary focus of my generation, as well as this council. 
As you've most likely heard, prairie dogs support over 200 species and should certainly not be taken for granted. This development will undoubtedly exterminate a prairie dog colony if they aren't transported to another location, which the changes of which seem slim. I urge you, Council, to see past what is present and look towards the future. The prairie, dogs do the prairie dog does not just support itself, it supports an entire ecosystem and it makes our home of Castle Rock brim with life, and life that we must appreciate. It is the humble prairie dog that makes life possible for the golden eagle, the bobcat, and the critically endangered blackfoot ferret, just to name a few. It is clear that the protection of the prairie dogs is crucial for sustainable ecosystems excuse me, here in Castle Rock, as well as everywhere else the prairie dogs once roamed. I'd also like to remind the council of one more crucial fact. The decisions made here at this meeting or the next or the one after that will not directly affect this council. This, the decisions made here will directly affect me, my fa and my children and their children. It is painfully easy to pass on environmental problems to the next generation instead of dealing with them head on. When we talk about sustainability, we have to understand that it is in fact us, the youth, that will have to deal with the devastating environmental consequences of a policy just like this. As a member of that group, I strongly suggest that you take this into consideration when you make your decision. Environmental issues are already a growing problem being unacknowledged on a global scale, and this is our chance to mitigate one of them. Why let an easily preventable problem now become an unnecessary regret in the future? This colony of prairie dogs should not become a victim to this and deserve more than they're currently receiving. As I stated earlier, they bring the town of Castle Rock life. And I know that I'd much rather have my kids look out and enjoy the view and the wildlife than deal with overcrowding, tourism, and buying who knows what at this mega mall. Mayor Donahue and members of the council, I urge you as citizens of Castle Rock, as citizens of the United States, and most importantly, citizens of the world, to promote environmental stability and protection for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pakula. Uh, Beth Ann Senderek. Hi, thank you for letting me speak. My name is Beth Ann Senderak, and I am a resident here in Castle Rock. I've lived in Colorado about half my life, and I'm raising two children here. I'm a neonatal ICU nurse at Children's Hospital. My life revolves around the future of people and the world, this earth that we live on. It is our duty to take care of this planet. That is why I believe that humans are here. We need to get, take care of each other and take care of this planet. This is vitally important. You just heard a young lady speak about how concerned she is about her future. When I hike around, when I drive around this community, my children look out and they're like, oh, there's a prairie dog, eagle, falcon, hawk. They aren't, there's a McDonald's, there's a super mall. <laughs> they don't, <laughs> people just, don't truly care about those things. That is not what makes us human. What makes us human is this planet and this earth and sustaining it for everybody. I just ask you all to look inside your heart. Go home, ask your children what they think. Ask them, because they are what is important. They are what is truly, truly important. That is why, why we are here. That's why we have children, to keep, this, to keep ourselves going. And we cannot exist without animals and wildlife and wild lands. I would say that I am opposed to the mall. I don't think that that's even a possibility at this point. But the least we can do is to relocate these animals. There's absolutely no reason that we can't. I don't know if you've heard of the Southern Plains Land Trust, but they are very involved in getting land procured for animals and relocating them. There are several organizations here that are willing to help. I don't see why we can't all come together and make this happen. It's the right thing to do. So I just ask you all to just follow your hearts and do what's right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Sandrak. And next I have Barbara Sunblade. Hi, my name is Barbara Sunblade and I reside in Parker, Douglas County. 
Um, I'd first like to thank uh, Mayor Donahue and the Council for providing this opportunity to the public to express our concerns and possible solutions to the prairie dog dilemma. <clears throat> I have a distinct impression Alberta development considers prairie dogs pests or vermin, if you will. Uh, they are not. Scientific data proves that prairie dogs are critical to the plains biodiversity and long-range health. Prairie dog burrows serve as homes for burrowing owls, cottontail rabbits, rattlesnakes, and other animals. The burrowing activity of prairie dogs decreases soil compaction, increases water, and provides recreation for photographers and naturalists. Some time ago, I spoke to a representative of Alberta Development. I don't remember her name. Um, but she indicated an effort was made um, to find land owners willing to take on the displaced prairie dogs to no avail and that the prairie dogs would be killed and fed to re uh, rescued raptors. If Alberta development has not made that effort, it begs the question, why not? I respectfully request that you act in an environmentally responsible manner and provide additional time until June to relocate these animals to a permanent safe location that will ensure their survival and continue to contribute to the plains biodiversity and long range health. As has been mentioned, there are many here who are willing to take on that task. So please consider that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sunblade. Next, I have Pam DeJong. Hi, my name is Pam DeJong. I'm a resident of the Meadows in Castle Rock and um, also a fourth generation Coloradan. Um, I didn't realize there was an organized sort of thing, <laughs> so I'm going to veer a little bit. Um, I definitely lend my voice of concern to all those who come before me. Um, one thing that I was really concerned about when I heard about the promenade coming in was where's all the wildlife going to go? Not just the prairie dogs, but gosh, the deer, the fox, the elk, the um, just everything that, that makes this such a special place to live. And that applies not just to the promenade, but any other development. You know, I see the houses and stuff going in down Wolfensperger. I'm always concerned, and I know that uh, development will happen. It's going to happen. But I think we can probably do a little better to make sure that we're considering um, how we're displacing the wildlife that live there. Um, I do have one specific question and then just two concerns that I'd like to see addressed. I don't know if that's in follow-up here or later on the website. Um, I'm concerned about, I heard the mention of the wildlife corridor, so I'm looking for more information on what that means, um, specifically with regards to the I-25 um, interchange going in. Are we providing you know, places for the wildlife to go to and from there, within the promenade development, whatever. So I'm just interested in more about that. Um, as a Meadows resident, I'm really concerned about the traffic patterns. Um, I fortunately work from home, so I don't have to commute for now. Um, but good heavens, when this goes in, the traffic could be just be monstrous. So I'm interested in hearing how that's been addressed. Um, and then specifically, presuming that the promenade is going on, um, I'm very, I'm concerned about, um, gosh, the influx of chains. I saw that there's a Starbucks going in and my eyes can't roll far enough back in my head for that. Um, <laughs> and so I'd like to know what incentives are being given, if any, um, for locally owned businesses, or at the very least regional chains. Because um, if we're going to have a large development going in there, I'd sure like to see it filled with, you know, uh, businesses that originate from Castle Rock and Douglas County and the surrounding areas and not, you know, big box chains whose purpose it is to put out of business mom and pop stores. So um, I don't envy you your jobs, but I appreciate you doing them. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jung. 
Uh, next I have Patty McDonough. Well, I haven't seen this many Colorado natives since I was in first grade. <laughs> that tells me something. Um, I was born in Colorado. <clears throat> Not that it makes any difference, but my family's been here for six generations. So we've seen a lot of changes, some of them good, some of them bad. I lived in Denver, and 30 years ago, we escaped Aurora Denver, Littleton, Lakewood, all of those same, they're all the same. We escaped and we moved to West Douglas County. When I do my grocery shopping, I come to Castle Rock because I don't want to deal with the suburbs. I don't want to. I live in Douglas County because of the nature, because of the wildlife, because the sense of freedom that you get here. I love watching the animals. I watch them every day. I watch something every day. My grandson lives near the tech center. When I get him and I bring him out here, we stop, we watch prairie dogs, we watch deer, we watch, we used to be able to watch antelope. Can't watch the antelope anymore. <clears throat> so, this is the first time I've uh, got out in front of everybody and hugged a tree. I love nature. And I miss my favorite places. You know, they just keep disappearing. When, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, all my secret places are gone now. And it's not like where this development is going has ever been my secret place. But what is vanishing <laughs> is the ability for everybody to just get out there and, and be with nature just for a few minutes and not be pushing and shoving and shopping and traffic jams and I don't know. That's why people come to Douglas County. They don't come here. I mean, maybe you want them to come here to shop. Well, I'm, I'm helpless against that. But we have a little chance to do something to protect the animals that are here right now. And relocating them makes sense to me. It's a, small, it's a small token that we really do care about the wildlife in Douglas County. And it's not just mouth. We have a little opportunity to do something. And the promenade developers have an opportunity to do something that will last in the hearts of people in Douglas County. If they, if they take consideration for the value we place on wildlife, they could do something unique and it could be a real opportunity. I was sitting back there and I'd forgot all about it, but my husband and I went to Detroit. Well, they don't have prairie dogs in Detroit, but the zoo there has the coolest dis display of prairie dogs I've ever seen. You go into a hole and you crawl through a tunnel and you pop your head up and you're in the middle of the prairie dog colony. <laughs> it's so cool. You have 30 and, seconds left, Miss McDonough. Okay, well, it just occurred to me that maybe something cool like that could happen. And I want to thank those kids that came from the high school and I'm so impressed they came. And I want to thank everybody else who came here for the prairie dogs and long live prairie dogs. Thank you, Ms. McDonough.